Five of the Supreme Court justices were elect appointed, not elected, obviously not. That would be democratic. And we don't do democracy in this fucking country. But appointed by two Republican presidents that didn't even win the fucking majority vote. They didn't win the popular vote. They lost the popular vote. And they got to elect five Supreme Court justices. That's, that's democracy to you? They get to overturn something for the 30% of the country that want to fucking you know, enforce their psychotic religious fucking perspective upon the entirety of the nation? That's insane, dude. That's not democratic at all. But it doesn't fucking matter, okay? Steven Crowder knows that. Black woman oh, thinks Here's no a one is racist in California? Talking with people clip. No racist in California? Come on, there's no way. Ever been to Venice? No. I've seen some, I live in California too. I've definitely seen, really I've, I've seen really racists really everywhere. Really yeah, yeah. Okay, there are definitely racist ass motherfuckers in California. I don't know what she's saying. Definitely some neo-nazis in california wait why is steven crowder coming across like a lib here i mean there are like clanty maybe we should go to clanty and i'll uh, and i'll do one of those videos where i'm like i'm hanging out with the clan here in clanty uh one of the uh capitals of, of white supremacy here in southern california and uh, so close to san diego known for its beaches and and lynching um <laughs> i'm gonna go have a conversation with someone <laughs> I'm gonna go have a conversation with someone of the clan. Hey, all right, you got five minutes to talk? <laughs> yes, oh, sure. great. What's your name? Casey. Casey. All right, Casey. Well, that ties in perfectly because we're talking about the. You know, all these protests there uh, a couple days ago here about the Roe v. Wade situation. Sure, absolutely. Have you been following that? I yes. live by Clanty, bro. It's a different world. I live in SD County. Please stop. Okay, so first let me ask you you can see yourself. Pro-choice, pro-life, pro-choice with limitations. How would you define um, your view? I'm definitely pro-choice. Okay. You know, um, I'm definitely pro-choice. Okay. What's your opinion on the, it's a leak right now, obviously. Sure. But if it's true, uh, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Um, it's ridiculous. You know, as okay. a woman, I think it's astronomical how we could consider, and no offense to you, uh, but how a heterosexual male can tell me what I should and should not do with my body okay. and what that actually means. Um, I think there's so many stipulations that go into this. You know, there's a lot of circumstances. And just so you know, I was told I couldn't have children. Um, I'm sorry. It's okay. But so this topic is like super sensitive to me and of course to my family. Um, but I know... Because, you, because you wouldn't need to have an abortion. I wouldn't need to have one. Um, but let's just say the opportunity ever arose itself. Um, there's all kind of medical conditions and reasons, topical pregnancies, uh, tubal pregnancies, things that have happened to your body um, that require abortions for medical reasons for us as women to like literally live and survive. Mm -hmm. um, so for you to say I'm, you're forcing me to either go through that experience and or heaven forbid, you know, my kid is, you know, there's all kind of testing that goes on early in your pregnancy. Sure. Um, and they'll let you know that there's fluid on the brain for a baby or something like that. And they do. Okay. She's spitting, which by the way. Uh, this is a weird part of just, like, living in America where, like, every random person, you know what I mean? You can be, like, a random American citizen, especially if you're, like, a woman, uh, a somewhat liberal-minded uh, person. Like, you have to literally become this, like, talking point machine. You know what I mean? No normal human being should have to constantly uh, be on the defensive and, like, have a fucking spreadsheet of facts ready to just like fire off but just such is the nature of being like a fucking normal human being in america where you're just like oh at any given moment i might have a, a steven crowder style situation where i just have to fucking blast off and and rattle off like every accurate point uh about why women should be able to have a fundamental uh the the fundamental liberty of, of choosing what to do with their own bodies wild not also, obviously, uh, two minutes in and Steven Crowder has not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to notice black woman thinks no one ra no one's racist in California. I love that. Uh, I love that, like, you know, this part didn't make it to the fucking title. I wonder why. Like, the title should be Black, black Woman Owns Me in the Marketplace of Ideas on, on uh, you know, being pro-choice. <laughs> You, um, Even though black woman there is like, why? Why did you put that in there? Okay, let's go. I'm continuing on with that pregnancy. I'm also 31, um, and so a lot of us are getting pregnant later in life. 
Um, so sometimes that's an issue, right? And it could be a health risk for the mother and the baby. Um, so whatever your reasoning is, more importantly, you could just be 18 and decide that that's not the decision that you want to make today and you're not comfortable with that. You could be a victim of rape. I don't care what your reasoning is. I think it's 100% your choice to decide. So none of those other things matter then? We could have just eliminated all that? Yeah. Just you think people should really get an abortion for whatever reason? I think just... you should be able to make any decision as far as HIPAA laws are concerned for yourself and your body at any time. So what is your, uh, because a lot of people have different interpretations or understandings of sure. what the overturning of Roe v. Wade is. Actually means. Yeah. What is your interpretation of what would happen if Roe v. Wade is overturned? Uh, my interpretation is that it doesn't matter what your reasoning is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that abortions will now be illegal or at least in the state of Texas um, for anybody. No. Correct me. No, it's not. No, it's and that's it. Just gives the it gives the right to states to make their own laws regarding abortion restrictions. Sure. So Colorado, you know, New Jersey, Virginia, California, the states that have abortion laws all the way up until and include nine months, they can still do that. So let me ask you a question: Do you think Texas is going to vote in which direction? Well, it, I, I don't want to get. I'll get into my opinion in a second. Um, but I want to sort of discuss the issue of whether we agree on the fact that it's good or bad law. So it's, it's not law. it's not a, it's not banning abortion. It puts it back to the states. I don't agree with that. Okay. So what do you think should happen? Do you think there should be a federal uh it should be enshrined in a federal law that abortion is a constitutional I think, right? I think it took a long time for Roe versus Wade to even become about and to pass and that if we aren't careful, history will continue to repeat itself over and over again. So the fact that that law is what it is, I don't know why we're going back and trying to now uh, tweak that. It doesn't make yeah. sense to me. Well, are you, um, and forgive me, this is not meant to be a gotcha at all. This law is complicated, and Roe v. Sure. Wade is complicated. You sure. know, that's why I had Roe v. Wade, then you had Planned Parenthood versus Casey, and these, it's always been a complex and issue. And I'm Casey. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, see, we tie it as called the callback. But uh, Roe v. Wade, the issue was, right, Roe v. Wade was sort of uh, under the guise, it was, it was settled under the guise of the 14th Amendment of the Due Process Clause. Okay. So there's no constitutional right to an abortion. Okay. And essentially because you just mentioned sort of the HIPAA laws. Sure. And the idea was that under the Due Process Clause there's a right to privacy, which also isn't necessarily a constitutional right, but under the Due Process Clause that a woman uh, had that right to privacy with her doctor and allowed state... Why? Who cares? Who cares? Uh... I, I don't care. You're you're not addressing the issue. Like, I don't like I don't like the fact that we have to play this game with conservatives or just like debate perverts in general, right? Where we have to act like uh the, the originalist position is like a legitimate one and not like a totally made up like uh, a totally made up fucking constitutional interpretation that was created in the past 50 years just because it's like taught in schools and shit now doesn't mean that it's like actually a legitimate way to interpret the constitution unless you let me cut your fucking leg off and kill you by the age of 35 in which case like okay you can be an originalist like i said you can be an originalist and and try to interpret the constitution uh as the as the founders intended and uh, with respect to the time uh, and, and with respect to the words that they use, but like you have to die at the age of 35. I'm fine with that, but you have to die at the age of 35 from smallpox. I feel like we're, we're like Disney adults when we have this conversation like, oh yeah, we have to take it seriously that you like want to want to fucking try to like have a bunch of legal jargon uh on uh and, and slap a bunch of legal jargon and like fucking constitutional interpretations into into whether or not women should be able to get a fucking health care uh women should be able to get like a a fundamental part of their health care coverage which revolves around their reproductive rights like it's it's stupid i i don't want to play that game i think it's a stupid fucking game i can if you want me to okay about like privacy and and the constitutional interpretation of privacy like does it actually extend to that if it doesn't then uh you know what what there's so many other things that would unwind in that situation but like it's it's a game that we all play normally it's a game that institutionalists play regularly right with with so many different rules and laws and whatnot just like plenty of originalist attitudes or plenty of originalist uh, decisions do not revolve around an originalist uh, point of view because how the fuck could you interpret it in that way? Because so many like new technological achievements are are things that our founders could not have fucking thought about. Like they would like George Washington was shit his fucking pants if I just showed him a telephone. You know what I mean? That like 
can can show him movies. Like he'd literally fucking piss and shit himself and then have an aneurysm and then die. I mean, first he would be like, why are there black people around? Okay, he would be like, what the fuck is going on? Why is that a black person dressed like that and is like being able to walk around? Holy fuck. That, and then after that, he would literally piss shit and fucking die the moment that he saw what a phone looked like. So the idea that like, but yeah, I'd give him fucking Mountain Dew and the, the yellow five alone would immediately cause him to spontaneously combust. So it, it's, it's ridiculous to, to fucking play this song and dance to, to try to be like, what's the constitutional interpretation on this? Like, who cares? States to set limitations only after the first trimester. So it bans states setting limitations within the first trimester. Absolutely, okay. And then you have states that, for example, have had like a heartbeat bill, things that occur before the second trimester. That kind of kicked it up to the Supreme Court, and they looked at it, and this is something that even Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, where they said, you know what, this is, this is just sort of bad law, so it has to go back to... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's it, uh, the entire fucking game about the Supreme Court is about, like, trying to fucking reinterpret the Constitution in a way that makes sense. That's it. In a way that, like... The living constitutionalists believe that it they need to interpret it uh, with respect to the time, like with respect to our current fucking time and our current understanding of the uh, of the rules and and whatnot. And then the originalists are like, oh no, we don't like that, so we've decided we're going to try to interpret it in the way that our framers intended it. It's just, comp but ultimately it doesn't matter. None of this fucking matters. You have to look at like what the outcomes are. Do you believe that we, the government, as the, the federal government, should be able to fucking stop people, stop women from, from getting abortions, especially in the first trimester, where 90% of abortions happen? Or do you think the government should inter interfere with that or not? That's it. All, the rest is just fucking seasoning. I'm sorry, I don't give a fuck about what people that, like, died because they didn't know how to wipe their asses think about a medical procedure that they could not have even fucking comprehended at a time when they literally did not think black people were human beings, okay? So dumb. We don't listen to them about anything. Why the fuck would we listen to them about an ectopic pregnancy and whether that's, like, a, you know, whether that's something that should be punishable by law if you need to, like, literally take this life-saving uh, medical procedure, it's so stupid. I feel like my, like I feel like we're talking to conservatives are literally like uh, uh, talking to babies. You know what I mean? The straw man's. What do you mean straw man's? It's a, it is it is literally that he's trying to, like he's trying to narrowly fit this into a a uh, constitutional argument. Like oh well, it's not actually a, an adequate interpretation of the way that the Constitution works. His worldview is supposedly an originalist worldview. Okay. It's not. It's a bullshit fucking way to analyze the Constitution anyway. It's also, like, a relatively new one. That's not a straw man at all. Just because you can understand what I'm saying doesn't change the reality that this is not a straw man. No constitutional right to an abortion. Okay. And it's interesting because you just mentioned sort of the HIPAA laws. Sure. And the idea was that under the Due Process Clause, there's a right to privacy, which also isn't necessarily a constitutional right. But under the Due Process Clause, that a woman uh, had that right to privacy with her doctor and allowed states to set limitations only after the first trimester. Like, it's a stupid, it, it's a stupid fucking way. Why the first trimester then? You know what I mean? Why not across the board? Why not all the way until the fucking very moment of pregnancy? It just doesn't matter. It's, it's an interpretation just like everything else. It is a, a frivolous back and forth that... I feel like adults that like to play make-believe play to make it seem like their their perspective is anything but offering more liberties to women or or not. Under the Constitution, the woman he's talking to wouldn't be allowed to attend the same school as him. I mean, he wants that for sure. You know they want that shit. Are you kidding me? But they'll couch it in ideas like school choice and the freedom to choose your school and not necessarily we should be able to segregate schools again, which are already uh, segregated for the record. I don't know. I just, I think like a lot of this song and dance is very stupid. I mean, I can, I can play the role of someone who's like, oh, let me, let me seriously analyze this from a constitutional interpretation point of view. But like, I think it's stupid to do that. You're like, you're a weird person for 
playing this song and dance. You are just as much of an institutionalist as the annoying fucking shit libs are, the Democrats are, where they're like, oh, we must protect the the, sac the sanctity of our institutions. Like, why? What, what are you talking about? They don't give a shit. There is no fucking sanctity. Our institutions are not infallible. They're just making it up as we go along. It's all made up. So just look to the fucking results. So it bans state setting limitations within the first trimester. Absolutely, okay. And then you have states that, for example, have had like a heartbeat bill, things that occur before the second trimester. That kind of kicked it up to the Supreme Court. And they looked at it, and this is something that even Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, where they said, you know what, this is, this is just sort of bad law, so it has to go back to the states. Okay. So that was the basis for Roe v. Wade. Um, does that change your opinion at all that there really is, there's no constitutional right to an abortion? Not necessarily because when we, when we talk about first trimester, I think I also don't agree that after your first trimester you should be looking at options as far as abortion, right? Because at this point, your fetus is a full-grown fetus. You know, there's things that are happening. That's not your true. Baby's developing. That's not true. Well, what if, what if you, okay. Second trimester pregnancies are relatively rare. Okay, the first trimester pregnancies are where ninety percent of the pregnant. Uh, the ninety percent second first trimester abortions are where ninety percent of the abortions happen. Second trimester uh, uh, abortions are still incredibly rare, and third trimester pregnancies are in almost all of the circumstances or abortions. Sorry, third trimester abortions are in almost all of the circumstances completely uh, because of a medical necessity. Second trimester terminations, second trimester abortions, however, can occur because the person just simply was oblivious to the fact that they are pregnant. That's why. One reason or the other, they did not want to have a pregnancy. They did not want to carry it to term. If they ever found out, they found out too late as a consequence of not having access to reproductive health services. They found out too late. Uh, and and uh, like there, there have been additional complications and and hurdles that stop them from being able to get it in the first trimester. Yeah, it's 93% to 6% to 1%. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. So this idea that this idea that like we have to have a conversation about the second trimester or the third trimester is such a silly one and it's one that is like conservative, it's one that conservatives always lock you into. Don't have this conversation. Do not have this conversation because especially when it comes to late term abortions, a, a terminology created by conservatives for the record, a third trimester abortion is almost always like 99.99999% of times is being done by a person who wanted to carry that pregnancy to term and they have to, they have to abort it because of the viability of the fetus or because of the medical complications that it's going to present to the carrier. So we're talking about an incredibly traumatic fucking experience for a family uh, that wanted to have a child as though they are like fucking and then doing it on the third trimester so they can like fucking feel something or whatever the fuck these psychotic animals believe. It's not a term made up by conservatives though. It's a real thing. Late term abortions is 100% propaganda. Instead of calling it a third trimester abortion, calling it a late term abortion or a post birth abortion actually in some instances is just the conservative uh, made up approach. There is no such thing like a late term abortion. Anyway, most importantly though, what? I mean, there's a Wikipedia. Ben Franklin was very pro-choice and is widely known. It's not a term made up by conservatives, though. It's a real thing. I mean, there's a Wikipedia article on it, bro. Wait, what? Are you serious? Are you okay? I don't even know what he's trying to say about, like, Wikipedia. Most, more than 90% are in the first trimester, 12 weeks. Yeah, I know. We already established that. Uh, they are, but they're really hard to get and only for medical reasons. Yes, for the most part. It's like overwhelmingly over it's just for fucking uh medical reasons okay for the mo like there's there, you can find like one person but it doesn't mean anything i'm not going to deny people uh the the afterbirth abortion yeah there is a uh, yeah there is a wikipedia page for it yeah oh i guess damn dude i guess i guess i got owned you know what i mean <laughs> I guess that's a real thing and not something that like is completely made up. There's a medical term called late term abortion referring to the late termination of abortion. Okay. After birth abortion, why should the baby live is a controversial uh, article published by Francesca Minerva and Alberto Giblini in the Journal of Medical Ethics in 2013, arguing to call child euthanasia after birth abortion and highlighting similarities between abortion and euthanasia. The article attracted media attention and severely scholarly critiques. Great. 
This is why, what do I always say? You should not engage in debate perverts, okay? And philosophy majors are the biggest debate perverts. Do you understand? Abortion is justified because of the moral status of the fetuses. Their shared status as potential persons is not morally relevant. Abortion is justified when the... I can't. I, this, this is so boring and so stupid. Ultimately, you are literally fucking ruining the life of a carrier for no fucking reason. This is why I'm saying, like, this is such a hyper-specific, idiotic, debate, pervert fucking talking point that is completely off of, like, 11 different tangents. I'm not going to talk about the philosophy of what it means to be a human being with a bunch of fucking Twitch chatters who have never even thought about it. It's stupid. I don't care. I don't care. What I do care is the millions of women that should be able to, if they want to, make the decision and have the freedom to be able to get a fucking medical procedure that is all, oftentimes like not that complicated. That's it. There is no reason to go back and forth and like try to fucking create a universe where, you know, oh, well, what if the in this hypothetical, like, you know, you want to fucking kill babies after they're born? Like, put a little guillotine on that pussy and just shave the fucking baby's head off as it's coming out? Like, you can make these, you can have these, like, philosophical conundrums, okay, if you want. I don't care. In this, in the grand scheme of things, we are talking about what the government is doing. And that has no bearing on what the government is doing. You just want to fucking have that conversation because you're a freak. That's it. So I, I understand up until that point, okay. but on a state-to-state -state basis or a federal basis, to me, I guess in that first trimester, it's still up to me and my doctor. So, so it sounds to me like you're saying you do support uh, eliminating abortion as an option after the first trimester. I do. I agree with that. Okay. Um, no reason to agree with that. Again, never concede to one of these fucking freaks. Don't do it. Don't, don't concede to them. Be like, no, I actually think abortions are valid, uh, even post-birth. I think you should be able to be post uh, postpartum aborted, uh, actually. What changes, for example, from week Cause, 11 and, and to the to people who say, like, well, Hassan, you're not going to win anyone over with that kind of attitude. It's like, if you think this guy is going to change his fucking mind, you are literally the biggest idiot on the planet, dude. Holy fuck, you're like a vegetable. This dude is not there to fucking have his mind changed. And most of these people who, like, try to lock you into a debate are not actually trying to have their mind changed. It's just the reality, okay? Maybe I'm too cynical at this point because I've seen so many people in bad faith try to debate, but that's the reality, all right? Fuck. Week 12, that makes it no longer acceptable. Eyeballs, fingers, toes, hair. I mean, you know, you're going from this small cell. I mean, just let's But that just happens make... before the second trimester. Well, but the See? thing is- See, that's why you don't concede to that. Bullshit, dude. That's why you don't concede to that fucking framing. I don't give a fuck if something has toes, okay? I don't care that you, uh, with the with the medical fascination of ultrasound technology, were able to fucking use technological achievements to, like, drive home a fucking narrative that, like, the little thing inside of you is something more than a fucking parasite. It's actually a real human because it's got fucking toes on it, all right? And that's why I love that Charlie Kirk video. Play that clip. Play the Charlie Kirk gets own clip, chat. Let's do it, okay? Dolphin fetus, Charlie Kirk gets owned. There you go. Hey, look at that. Come on, come on. Just I just want to I just want the video. I just want the video. I don't want a fucking Young Turks analysis on it. Here it is, dude. Here it fucking is, dude. Hey, let's take a look at that. What's that? What's that? Play that fucking DJ, play that clip. By God, that's the Hasanabi music. You know what I'm saying? You truly in your heart of hearts truly believe that this is a human being this without a doubt without a doubt yes this is a dolphin fetus so let me without a doubt a dolphin so fetus is a human being this is a human this is how simple it is but quite different dolphin you just confirmed that a dolphin in in life you confuse dolphins for human babies often so let me you ask go to sea world and you're like someone's got human babies in that aquarium there you go that fetus had fucking toes and shit. What's up? It also had a goddamn tail. It's just so fucking stupid to, to make this combo uh, go anywhere other than let's talk about, uh, let's just talk about the carrier and the re like why abortion should not be interfered upon uh, by the government. Um, the other side of this disgusting, nefarious conversation unproductive conversation is of course the conversation where he says well this is just about more democracy the state's rights conversation it's one of the most it's one of the most filthy 
One of the most disgusting fucking things I ever hear from conservatives regularly. It's literally the fucking entire point of the Civil War. Okay. Oh, it was states' rights. It was about states' rights. It was about states' rights. States starts to own what? States starts to own slaves. Okay. It's not about fucking states' rights. But not only that, but now they're trying to do that for abortion to act like this is actually about doing it in a more democratic capacity, except there's not a single fucking state in the country where uh, uh, overturning Roe v. Wade has more than 30% support. There is not a single state in this country where, again, I'm going to repeat myself, including Texas, including Florida, no state has a 51% support for banning abortions, okay? That does not exist. That's not real. That's not a thing. So just remember that. So that's not, it's not about democracy. You know what this is about? It's about how Republicans have already completely undermined democracy. They've already so successfully destroyed the democratic process so they can act like they care about uh, the states and, and how uh, uh, states can operate and conduct themselves because they've already heavily gerrymandered districts to a degree where, like, in Wisconsin, for example, you can win by 10 points and still lose the state legislature, something that we've talked about a million times over. So they know that in the state of Wisconsin, for example, even if the Democrats are winning by 10 points, they're still going to have more Republican state representatives. What does that mean? That means that there is no democracy in Wisconsin. That means that Wisconsin, despite being like super fucking liberal, for example, can still have a heavily dominated Republican state legislature that can turn around and fucking say abortions are illegal and will kill you if you get one, okay? Not saying that they're going to do that, but they could if they wanted to, okay? That's how it fucking works. So that's, and these fucking animals, okay, these conservative monsters know that. They know that reality, and that's precisely why they turn around and go, oh, the state's rights. It's about doing more democracy. I thought you guys liked democracy. What's going on? Where is the democracy? Where is the democratic process there? Relitigating something that 70% of the country has fucking agreed upon for literally the past 50 fucking years is insane. Using the Supreme Court, where five of the Supreme Court justices were in lifetime positions, by the way, five of the Supreme Court justices were elect appointed, not elected, obviously not, that would be democratic, and we don't do democracy in this fucking country, but appointed by two Republican presidents that didn't even win the fucking majority vote. They didn't win the popular vote. They lost the popular vote and they got to elect five Supreme Court justices. That's, that's democracy to you? They get to overturn something for the 30% of the country that want to fucking, you know, enforce their psychotic religious fucking perspective upon the entirety of the nation? That's insane, dude. That's not democratic at all, but it doesn't fucking matter, okay? Steven Crowder knows that. It's not about democracy. It's just he's just repackaging it as democracy because he's an evil person who now. Oh, I'm not done with the fucking uh, the anti-democratic bullshit. I'm trying to find the fucking uh, the, the, the thread that was really, really good on this issue. But it is it is deeply frustrating to have this conversation over and over and over and over again when i know that the other side does not give a fuck about democracy they do not give a fuck about autonomy they do not give a fuck about uh they do not give a fuck about making lives easier or better for the people that they're talking about oh, it is really frustrating and then to on top of that demand that i like live within your framework and and uh act like uh you're coming at it from a good faith interpretation and that uh, you just want to simply have a conversation over, like, the constitutional interpretation, it makes me blow a gasket. I, I lose my fucking mind when I hear someone in a country... Yep, yeah, this is the one. Thank you. This is actually a really good... Uh, this, this wraps up basically everything we've talked about in a very, very good way. Just a reminder, because of non-proportional representation of demographics in order to break the filibuster and overcome the R plus 6, 7 bias in the Senate... Democrats would need to win three straight elections by 19 points to make abortion legal nationally. They need to win the national vote several times in a row by five plus points to have a shot at breaking even. Most forecasts look at the 2024 landscape and don't think there's much of a chance for Democrats to hold the Senate past the 2024 election. Mitch McConnell has promised that if the Republicans regain control of the Senate in 2022, that he will not let Biden put any more Supreme Court justice on the bench. He would keep the seats open for up to six years if he had to. Starting in January 2023, there is probably no meaningful hope of changing the composition of the court. 
It is estimated that the United States already sky high maternal mortality rate will rise by 21% as a result of the Dobbs v. Jackson. Uh, most states are so gerrymandered that changing the composition of the state legislature is effectively impossible. She uses the example of Wisconsin as well. The GOP has been able to maintain super majorities in the Wisconsin legislature despite losing elections by up to 10 points. Remember, everything that she's mentioning here, we have covered over the past fucking four years. So when you listen to me sound like a fucking doom-pilled psycho who has completely given up on this process, understand that this is what I'm operating off of. Okay, this knowledge is part of the reason why I'm sick and tired of having conversations with conservatives about like this la la land that they want to act like we live in, where there is some sort of like democratic process when they themselves have undermined democracy so severely and so perfectly. And that's why I fucking hate the Democrats too, because they act like there's a, there's this, this Republican party that has successfully done this, this Republican party that has successfully done this is still running around. Uh, and, and going to turn back into a a, a uh, reasonable, moderate Republican Party, according to Nancy Pelosi. Like, come on, please throw our hands up in the air and go, please, Republicans, just just don't win too hard. What other ways is there that you suggest? Did you read my tip? I did read your tip. The other ways that I suggest are to apply pressure, to apply pressure with direct action, to apply pressure through organizing, to create actual political power within the working class of this country that's why i'm a fucking socialist okay that's why i believe in organizing your workplace that's what i advocate for all the time if you noticed that is kind of all i talk about all the goddamn time because we can't even get the democratic party to do what is right by just simply saying we're going to vote for you please please do our bidding we're not we're not able to do that we will never be able to get them to do that so in order to get the democratic party to even apply pressure to its own ranks as you saw earlier today when joe manchin the supposedly moderate democrat that you love so much decided to vote against codifying roe v wade at a time when he doesn't even need it like he doesn't even have the power where he literally fucking voted against it the democrats could not even maintain a majority to codify roe v wade at a time when 70 percent of the country wants it that's a moderate Democrat right there. Why isn't Joe Biden going on the bully pulpit and saying, I'm going to fucking kill you if you don't fucking vote the way I want you to? Why doesn't he do that? He's the president. That's what Donald Trump would have done. Why can't Joe Biden go on the stage and be like, I am literally, listen out, Jack, look alive. Look alive, Jack, I'm Irish. I'm about to go IRA on your fucking riverboat, okay, on your houseboat. Why isn't Joe Biden... At the very least, obviously I'm fucking exaggerating, but why isn't Joe Biden at the very least turning around and saying, listen, oh, you're not going to vote alongside the Democratic Party? That's crazy. No, it's fine. No, um, ring, ring. Is that the IRS? Yeah, let's, uh, let's investigate Joe Manchin's uh, family's fucking businesses in the coal uh, mining industry. Let's take a look at what's going on there. Oh, are you, are you not going to uh, deal with us? Are you not going to do the right thing? Well, I'm going to remove you from your fucking committee positions. Guess what? You're not getting any lobbying dollars anymore. Is, are you going to get lobbying dollars if you're not a part of the energy committee? Why are you a part of the energy committee again when your brother uh, has a, uh, owns a fucking coal mining operation that you make $5 million off of year after year? Why is that happening? Huh? Same with Kristen Cinema. Take her off. Don't fucking put her on goddamn bills. Don't give her a fucking gimme. Get her off every fucking committee, strip her of all the fucking power that she has, belittle her on a daily fucking basis, and make her life living hell through the proper protocols that the Republican Party oftentimes uses when push comes to shove and they want to whip votes in their fucking favor. But the Democrats can't do that. They don't want to do that because they don't care to do that. They are the controlled opposition party. But in order for us to be able to push, push the Democrats to even do that right thing so that they can like actually get the people that we voted for to operate in a way that like uh, suits us our interests as working class Americans rather than the fucking interests of the corporations of the wealthy, we have to organize. That's it. That's the point. It's very frustrating that dumbasses, even at this stage, when you are literally demonstrably seeing that just simply vote law for the Democrats doesn't work, still come into this chat and turn around and say, well, we just, we just need more moderate Democrats, actually. No, we don't. Moderate Democrats are the reason why we're here to begin with. We need to start fucking bullying our own representatives. That's it. We need to bully them to do the right thing because they're not going to do it. What if I'm wrong on what? Are we allowed to bully you? What if I'm wrong? Yes, dude. You already bully me. I live in this existence where I have to listen to fucking mouth-breathing losers like you on a regular fucking basis. That is literally my living hell. 
I am a fucking Twitch streamer, and you are such a fucking pathetic little vegetable-brained idiot that you cannot comprehend the difference between a legislator that is able to change your life in dramatic ways, okay, a public servant that works for you, that is supposed to work at the behest of the citizens that elected him, but instead works for the fucking corporations, and me, a Twitch streamer. Having to exist in a space where a fucking idiot like you can reach out to me and have me hear their fucking idiotic takes is already my living hell. Okay, I have to listen to you. Why are you constantly molding? A great question. I wonder why. Because I have to fucking listen to dudes who cannot comprehend the difference between me and a fucking senator, dude. I have to listen to idiots who come in here and say, hey, I, I should be able to bully you, right? Like, you already do, man. You already do. Because I live in a world where... I live in a fucking universe where, like, as a Twitch streamer, I say, hey, our politicians should do our bidding. And there's still people who are like, I don't know, man. I feel like I should be able to kill you if you're going to talk like this. Like, are you Joe Manchin? Is Joe Manchin in the chat? Why are you defending people that don't care about you to a person who at the very least wants what's best for you? Has no power, but at least is like making the argument that they should literally listen to you. And you are so fucking brain broken that you're turning around and be like, no, I'm going to defend the politician, I think. Because I'm so brain broken by watching YouTube essayists say how much you fucking suck that I literally live on a planet where I think you have any fucking power as a Twitch streamer and you're an evil person, an ontologically evil person. So therefore, all matter of like weird bullying and, uh, and, and harassing and psychotic cyber stalking that I engage in is justifiable morally in my worldview. But the real reason is because I reply to you. The real reason is because I am accessible. Joe Manchin is not. I'm accessible. Mark Zuckerberg is not. I'm accessible. Elon Musk is not. If you had any fucking way to sway their point of view, you would turn around and do everything you can to fucking bully them and annoy them. But no, you don't have any power. You recognize your powerlessness. So you come in here and maybe exercise a crumb of power by changing the fucking stream for 30,000 people. <sighs> Let's get back to the Steven Crowder video. Why is Plan B a thing, right? There's a reason why day after something, right. you can go into CVS right now and a young lady can say, I know I did whatever I did last night and I'm going to make sure Probably that I protect sex. myself. So did what I did, I'm right. assuming sex. Sure. Yeah. And so to me, you saying, okay, here at this point in time, there's people who are, I'm not a doctor, right, honestly. Right. Uh, I wouldn't be wearing this. Spoiler before. alert, neither am I. Yeah. I don't know if you can tell. So, you know, somebody somewhere sat down and said, this makes sense. Who gets paid a lot more money than me and understands the anatomy of the human body. But yeah, no, I but don't. But that's kind I, of the issue though, right? Is, mm -hmm. is no one has sat sit down and said it made sense. For example, in a place like Colorado, you can have- It's not true. It's not true. Of course they have thought about this. You, you Like Steven Crowder is creating a universe in which like, Steven Crowder is creating a universe in which like doctors and medical professionals have not on top of on top of like the philosopher Andes, okay? Have not talked uh, uh, talked endlessly about the medical ethics. Like he just thinks that, you know, people are not people have not considered the medical ethics of of uh, allowing women to be able to get a fucking abortion. That's wild to me. That's actually wild that like he could convince more than one person that like we live in a world where uh, doctors have simply not thought about it. They're, I guess they're just like letting it happen. Like no one has actually thought about it. If you thought about it, uh, you would recognize that it's fucked up. <sighs> have an abortion all the way up until eight, nine months. Yeah, no, I don't agree with that. Okay. And that'll still be the law in Colorado. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The reason why it's the law in fucking Colorado is because it is a medical necessity, okay? That's it. Sure. And in Virginia, you know, you had the governor where there were babies who survived abortions and they were still being allowed to die. Okay. I love his fucking, look at this link, dailycaller.com, dude. Oh, sick. Sick. Because technically they tried to abort them. They'll still be allowed to do that in Virginia. Well, what's the difference between that and some girl throwing herself down the stairs? People are going to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Well, no, this is about babies who were born who survived abortions, and they were just leaving it in a room to die. Sure, but you're saying in Colorado at eight months, it's still legal for them to get abortions, which I didn't know. That's what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so if a lady's eight months pregnant and she's just in dire whatever mental state and she decides she doesn't want to have that kid. See, is this is actually good. She's, like, pushing back in the most, like, sane way because she's like, that. well, that's insane, actually. 
what you're saying seems like an insane thing to think and say. This is why I'll probably rip like enough hair from my head that like more than more than like a human being has on top of their fucking head i feel like without this chat i would have like a a, a way thicker mane a way fuller head of hair this is stop her from jumping off the top of this building and or pushing herself down the stairs well i don't know hopefully there'd be some bars on the window we don't know we don't know right wait what, what? Why? I thought he was a libertarian. Why do you want to stop people from fucking committing suicide? I'm so confused, bro. What the fuck? You mean the government should regulate uh, people that want to kill themselves? That's not very libertarian of you, my guy. I thought my body, my choice applied to fucking, you know, taking vaccines and shit. What's up with that? That's the other thing. It's like vaccines. Uh, my body, my choice, actually. But yeah, homie immediately is like, yeah, we should put bars... I'm, I'm just a, I'm just trying to understand your position because it's something that's obviously a heated issue and I'm trying to see I don't where there is common the, ground. I don't need the nanny state to tell me I can't commit suicide. It sounded to me like you were saying after the second trimester, no abortion, but now it sounds like you're saying, yeah, it should be fine for a place like Colorado to have abortions at seven, eight months. No, I'm not saying that at all. Okay. I literally said I do not agree with okay, that. Okay, so you still think... But okay. what I don't think is that we should go so far back that we're saying... Every state should make their own opinion before the first trimester, after the second trimester, because to me, I live in Texas, I'm originally from California, and I know we vote very differently yes. between a I hope liberal that you're not state. one of those who comes from California and brings your politics here, because you left for a reason, <laughs> right? I didn't leave my choice. My parents brought me here. Oh, okay. So I, I think views are going to very much differ in living in the Bible Belt. I've seen, yeah. you know, how that can affect people. Um, I've seen how it affects me as a black person, 112%. So how I, so? Uh, what's because, the 12th? What, what's the 12%? Yeah. What's the 12 past 100? I literally went. It's an expression, man. Come on. Oh my God. He's like literally trying to nitpick anything he can. It's wild, dude. Uh, what's the 12%, lol? Uh, okay, dude, please, please, Canada, take him back. I went to a restaurant when I was eight years old and they told my cheerleading coach that I couldn't go into their restaurant because I was black and that was in Texas and it would never happen That's in terrible. California. So there's also, just also wait, uh, hold on. I gotta like talk about something, okay? Um <clears throat> So we brought up Colorado abortion laws, okay? So important to mention here. So, in, uh, abortion in Colorado is legal in all states of the pregnancy. It's one of the seven states without any term restrictions as to when a pregnancy can be terminated. 59% of adults said in a poll by the Pew Research Center that abortion should be legal in all and most cases in Colorado. So, one, that's democratic. States' rights, baby. Sucks to suck. You can't be fucking talking about that. So, there's that, first and foremost. And and let's take a look at, like, the actual decisions and, and the context of why free birth uh, correlates to teenage girls having fewer pregnancies, all that sort of stuff. But let's talk about why uh, it is allowed, okay? Uh, ballot box history. Colorado Amendment 48 was an initiative in 2008 to amend the definition of a person to any human being from the moment of fertilization. On November 4th, 2008, the initiative was turned down by 73.2% of the voters. Hmm, consistent with the rest of the country. That's really interesting that religious fucking weirdos tried to change that in the Colorado Constitution and wanted to turn into uh, turn it into like a person is any fertilized uh, a seed, okay? Any fer uh, fertilized egg is a person. And 73% of Colorado said, fuck no. But Stephen Crowder is mad about that. Why is Stephen Crowder seeing himself into Coloradans' business if he wants states' rights? Can someone explain that to me really quickly? Oh, probably not, because it has nothing to do with fucking states' rights at all. It has everything to do with just, like, having a dumbass fucking conversation, having a dumbass argument. So that's one thing. Colorado Proposition 115 was a 2020 ballot initiative preventing abortion after 22 weeks unless the pregnancy endangered the mother's life. Pregnancy, uh, performing abortion after 22 weeks would have been would have become a class one misdemeanor. On November 3rd, 2020, Colorado voters rejected Proposition 115 with 59% of the voters opposing the initiative. Once again, it didn't work. States' rights. But it doesn't matter. Motherfucker still wants to change that reality, right? He wants to use it at least as a talking point. It does not matter. In 1990, 426,000 women in the state faced the risk of an unintended pregnancy. Since the start of the 2008 Colorado Family Planning Initiative, the number of abortions performed in the state fell by nearly half for women between the ages of 15 to 19. 
Which, by the way, I, I suspect the Colorado Family Planning Initiative is the exact same thing as like what the abortion uh, freaks do, regardless. Like that's the that's the anti-abortion uh, activists that go in and lie to people and like try to urge them to not be uh, to not get a fucking uh, you know abortion. Uh, deaths and injuries from unsafe and illegal abortions in the period between 1972 and 1974. There were zero recorded illegal abortion deaths in the state. During the winter of 1978, three women in less than a month required hospitalization in Denver after consuming pennyroll oil for the purpose of trying to induce an abortion. One of those women died. Uh, hold on. There was uh, violence, abortion violence. Hold on. Where's the fucking context, though? I want to see, like, what the uh, third trimester abortions and, and, like, what is the... What is the allowance or what is the context in which like third trimester abortions are uh, allowed? This abortion restriction law did not pass because it meant strong opposition. Yeah. Time and time again, Colorado, uh, the, the, the Republican Coloradans have tried to change the laws in their favor. And time and time again, they have lost. Even though, even then, the number of abortion clinics in the state has been declining for years, going from 73 in 1982 to 59 in 1992 to 21 in 2014. 21. Part of that is because of the slowness of the Medicaid payments in 2016 and low Medicaid reimbursement rates resulted in two Planned Parenthood clinics in Colorado being closed in 2016. There's also the Colorado Family Planning Initiative. So even in countries, I mean, even in states, sorry, where uh, they have... The entirety of the state, literally, pretty much, like the overwhelming majority of people saying that you should be able to uh, get an abortion whenever you want, okay? They still find a way to to rot that system by underfunding it. By the way, shouts out to the Hyde Amendment. Uh, incredible stuff there. And they try to undermine, uh, even in states like Colorado, the right to be able to get, an, uh, get a fucking abortion. <sighs> The state has seen anti-abortion rights violence, including a death following the shooting at a Planned Parenthood clinic in Colorado Springs in Colorado in November 2015, by the way. But Colorado Democratic Party largely supports the access to abortion, while the Colorado Republican Party have embraced the hardline anti-abortion stances, and they try to do everything they fucking can. Anyway, all right. Time and time again, they have tried, once again, like I said, <clears throat> and failed. Why does someone need the choice to get an abortion up to going into labor? Why? Okay, great question. Okay, are you ready for this? First, my my question to you is like, why do you care? Okay, like, what what's it to you? Like, obviously, you're not the one who's fucking uh, carrying a pregnancy to term. You're not the one who's going to be fucking, uh, you know, giving birth. You're not the one who's going to actually, you know, take care of the child. So maybe you should shut the fuck up. Now, the second reason, and the and the more important part of this is that, you know, the uh, in like. All, almost all of the situations where someone is having a third trimester pregnancy, that is a medical complication that is an absolute necessity. You don't care about the sanctity of life. You've never had a morally consistent perspective on the sanctity of life. So shut the fuck up about that. Let's be real. Most humans don't, especially if you're not conservative. And if you are literally a fucking, you know, uh, the type of person who's like, I want to restrict women from having uh, abortions, then you probably, you quite literally are in an oxymoronic position where you are openly admitting that you don't care about the sanctity of the carrier, which is a life. Um, but like I said, ultimately it's not about, wait, you banned them. What did they say? Joe Biden even can put together a sentence. Does someone need the choice to get an abortion and go into labor? Why? I actually have two children. I fucking doubt it. So first and foremost is bodily autonomy. But secondly, only 1% of terminations happen. Only 1% of abortions happen. And, and dude, I'm not going to look at the clickbaited uh, Philip DeFranco video, dude. Are you, are you Philip DeFranco's alt account or something? I got it. I know. I'm not going to look at it right now. Please stop. Please. Please stop sending it to me. Please. I don't want to stop people from being able to get abortions in the third trimester because people that get third trimester abortions are in almost 100% of the circumstances getting them even though they wanted to carry the pregnancy to term. Do you understand? So these people don't want to have that abortion. They are forced to have that abortion. Do you understand? So having a conversation about like this incredibly traumatic experience for so many women... But of course, a very tiny margin of women and with respect to the rest of the women that do end up getting abortions, 
I'm not going to stop them so they fucking die because we are conceding to some debate pervert that is creating a hypothetical scenario where like women literally just want to do a murder on a baby. That's why they like, they want to just like fucking you know, have a child. They want to like make sure that the, the fetus has viability outside of, of uh, the body and then fucking kill it. So you feel uh, the, the sense of murder or something, whatever your fucking perverted mind uh, thinks. Very strange. This thing's well, it definitely happens in California. Okay. Oh, yeah. I appreciate talking Come to you. California. <laughs> Aren't really the states trying to ban abortions still allowing abortions and medical issues? No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. Plus, it doesn't matter. Here, you see? You give even one fucking ounce of concession and people are like, well, they're not trying to ban it for medical reasons. Yes, they are. They are trying to ban it for medical reasons as well. There are states where you literally, you know, state legislatures, uh, people in the state legislature are straight up saying, like, even if you have an ectopic pregnancy, which means, like, there is no fetus that's going to live and the carrier is going to 100% die, God should sort it out. States are going so far as to go after IUDs, and you're over here being like, well, it's fucking states are not. Also, Steven Crowder had an eight-minute conversation with this person who was very thoughtful and did a really good job defending abortion, and then he turned around and titled it, Black Woman Thinks No One Is Racist in California. Eight minutes and 39 seconds. In the last five-second stretch, I guess she says something. Really fun. Okay. And now I you're saying no racist in California? Come on, there's no way. Ever been to Venice? I've seen some. I live in California too. I this is the most copium induced thing I've ever seen in my entire life. She didn't even say anything about that. He literally put words in her mouth and then titled it as such. Literally said there was racist in California. Really seen, really I've, there's no way. Ever been to Venice? I've seen some. I live in California too. I've definitely really seen. I've, I've seen racists that. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely some neo Nazis. She said, I've seen racists everywhere. In California. Thank you. Yeah, when you were in California, there was racist in California, as in you, okay? You are the racist in California, dumbass. That's crazy. Fuck, I wanted to watch that abortion video, but it's already getting late as fuck for it today. <coughs> um, and I'm I'm getting I'm on edge. I don't know. I just I hate it. It's not that Steven Crowder pisses me off when I watch his videos, it's that like there are idiots in the chat that like defend uh, some of the dumbest things that come out of his mouth and it like kills me. It fucking murders me. And then because I use like passionate language, because I call people idiots and stupid, they get really butt hurt and then they're like, oh wow, Hassan is just like he can't take any sort of criticism. He can't take any sort of backlash. I'm gonna reorient my entire fucking worldview because Hassan hurt my feelings. But ultimately, I hope that there was a little bit of insight and you were able to recognize certain things about the abortion conversation in this process that changed your mind a little bit because that's ultimately my goal, okay?